Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. I'm going to paint a whimsical bird today, a doodly whimsical bird. I'm using my Canson XL sketchbook here, which we're getting through quite rapidly, but that's okay. I think next time when I order the next one, um, I'll get a, a slightly bigger one. Anyway, so we're just going to do one bird and I'm going to just draw the outline here. And as you know, my, my whimsical birds aren't really uh, realistic, not exactly, but they're sort of identifiable as birds. So I've done the body like this and we're going to give him a, a fairly big beak like that and a, a nice big eye bigger than perhaps usual. And um, I'm going to put some sort of teardrops off to the side like that. And then his wing is going to be down here like that. I'll give it a, a little bit of a curve around the top. And then um, some feet down here, just one foot. Two feet and then let's imagine that he's standing on a, a wire kind of thing shall we now um, let me see let's find a brush this is a round size 7 draw well brush and I'm going to do the background color first so I think we'll start off with something fairly light I'm using the Kiritaki colors here um, Kurataki Gansai Tambi colours and let's put in a nice um, wash leaving holes. I'm going to leave holes and the reason why I'm going to leave holes is because I want some areas where I can put in for example blue or yellow, sorry not yellow, blue or red without it necessarily being um, tainted or tinted, changed by the colour underneath. So we're going to gradually add orange to the yellow. This is cadmium orange and we'll put some of that in and uh, don't need to worry too much about leaving gaps on the wing. Cause, um, well, I don't, I don't know quite exactly how this is going to go. So we're just putting in a nice lot of red here. That's uh, Mat Rose Madder and uh, a bit more orange down the back here on the wing. I'm painting this fairly thickly. Um, then the under, underneath, first of all, I'm going to pop in some a sort of base coat of grey and Bring that up fairly close to the wing. It doesn't matter if it bleeds a little bit. Just make it a bit more interesting. Um, and then I'm going to get some turquoise. Some of these colours are quite opaque, which is quite nice. Just drop in some blue like this and let that sort of wishy-washy around. And then maybe a little bit of violet. This is, uh, what is that colour? That is um, cobalt violet, that's right. And a bit more blue. Greenish blue, a bit more of that down here. It's a nice contrast with the um, with the red and the 
I'll put in some some dots and things on the undercoat of orange, yellow, whatever you want to call it. And let's paint his beak in red. And um, let's do these. Uh, this is kind of like his, um, what do you call it? Uh, cr cr crest or no, what do you call it, the thing on the top of a cockerel's head? Cr um, I always forget this word. Uh, <clears throat> it seems to be that particular word is blocked in my head when I'm painting because I had this problem before. I'll, I'll, I'll remember it in a minute. And then maybe let's make his feet nice and blue. Once we've got all the colours into place, then we can um, doodle, but we'll have to let it dry first. Uh, let's do some more of these things down here. Let's do them in blue. Drop in some dark blue. Okay, I think uh, let's just put a little bit more red in the middle of these here. And I'm gonna put a pupil in his eye. and I'm going to let it dry. Okay, so he's dry, I think, and I'm going to use for my next stage, being as this is obviously a multimedia, uh, mixed media thing, um, I've got a box of ink tense pencils that a kind lady sent me, and I'm going to use those for the next step, I think. And what I'm going to do is just basically doodle with these. So, so I'm going to be picking up various colors and just going over what I've already done. So for example, doing extra lines and circles and you know, you name it. The 
little triangles, circles. These paints, these pencils are um, watercolor, <coughs> watercolor pencils. So they will bleed when I touch them with the paint brush. Go darker like that. Using the pencils, you can sharpen things up and make them go rounder, you know. much more easily than you can with a brush. And if you if you want to make texture, you can do that. Sort of just lay the pencil on the side and rub it over like that. That's black, I don't necessarily want black. And you could do a random pattern over where you've painted the wing, for example. I'm looking for a light blue and I'm not seeing a light blue, which is a shame. But we have to use this one. So we go inside those circles. The doodling is is fun. Take as long over it as you like. It's quite nice to go around the outside edges, I think. soft green there. Perhaps we put some of that in there. And then when you get to a certain point, You can come in with paintbrush again if you want. So just some water and then we can sharpen up some of them, make them a bit darker. Let's put a branch here, blue perhaps. Gabriel's out. We've let the chickens out. They've been in the last six weeks. They've been inside for the because of the bad weather. And I've just let them out. It's 
So he's making a nice noise. Just make his eye a little bit softer. And we could now go, if we like, to some white pen. Yeah, we were worried about the sheep in the winter because it was the the mud, the mud in the field, and um, we thought, and I think it's true that the grass needed to be rested. So, because we had such a terrible drought last year with the heat wave and everything, and the grass was really badly damaged. So this year, for the first year, we never had to do it before. We had to take the sheep inside the barn just for six weeks, though, and they've been fine. And they're, funnily enough, um, much tamer now than they were before. They, they know their names, and when you say, no, Larry, do not go in the workshop, he, he comes away and doesn't go in the workshop. which I think is quite remarkable for a sheep, don't you think? So the white dots really sort of, um, the white embellishments, definitely you can make them improve things. I'm not totally happy with the shape of the bird's beak, so I'm just going to try and change it a bit with the white. Okay, well, we could carry on forever embellishing more and more and improving it with pencil, doing whatever you feel. That's blue, I don't think I want blue. I think maybe we'll go for the black a little bit here. Let's see what happens. Put a little bit of black on. Hope you enjoyed that. Just to remind you, I used watercolor on a multimedia, mixed media book. Kiritaki paints, size seven round brush, and um, then some ink tense pencils to give me a nice textured look to the bird. So something you can't really do so easily with the watercolour. So I think I'm quite happy with that, I think. I'm not sure I like the very large eye. That's an experiment. Um, don't know if I can change it, I suppose. Probably could. Does he need a light in his eye, do you think? Yeah, not too. That's one. 
right. He'll do. Paint a bird a day and um, what's the word? What did we say? Paint a bird a day and beat the blues away. So we'll do that today. I'll say bye-bye for now. Cock-a-doodle-doo and bye-bye from me to you.